the 26th of May 2023. I'm going to shout a bit louder, folks. It's not anger. It's just that I noticed some of my instructional videos are a little bit hard to hear me on them. And I'll try and remedy that. But for now, anyway, just that's why I'm shouting a bit loud. The weather conditions is good in Ireland. It's not that warm, but there's great growth and we're not complaining. I'm a farmer and I'm very busy, but I'll take time to do this because I have people in, in touch with me who are immediately facing all kinds of attacks on the environment by our Irish government. Now, um, this is, you see here, cost protection order. I don't know, can you see that there? Cost protection order. Now, I have to preface my little talk here is to say to you, if you're not into planning and development and how you beat these, this, this government of ours and, and this rascality, uh, you can go on. Just click out of it and please don't waste time on this because I have to have my videos suitable for a, a, a wide audience and specialised audiences. Uh, but um, uh, one of the things I have to also say is that nobody watching me is my client. I'm not a lawyer. I've studied this law good. I can't be accountable for how it's implemented, how the courts will implement it. In fact, I can nearly go as far as to say that it's the look of the draw, what judge you get in Ireland. And if you get judges in the High Court or the Court of Appeal, they have already uh, ruled against this where the Supreme Court has ruled in favour. So I can't be held accountable for that. Be that as it may, I'm doing my very best to help everyone. The other thing is for any professional person or any lawyer or anybody uses my information or consults me, that's in strict confidence. I do not uh, divulge private conversations. I have stuff in my head that would be great news if I could get it out there, but I don't want to do that. And there are lots of things goes on that I can't tell you about. So I won't be uh, divulging any conversation with anybody. Safe to say that I know that the groups on for around the country are facing a massive onslaught of onshore wind in the last year of this government. And we're now facing a massive onslaught of offshore wind and an attack on the, on the marine environment by our government and their, and their paid uh, opportunists from big vulture funds all over the all over the place. That's all right. I'm not giving out about it. Don't bother. Don't cry anything about it. I don't care what they do. My job is to stop them. And that's my job. So now for those who are interested in this, I want to deal with this. When you are dealing with the Irish Planning and Development Act, you go online. That's what the judges and all really refer to. The day of getting a hard copy, you used to get it from the government publications office. And 40 years ago, I used to go to the government publications office for legislation. Now, I think it's still there. But uh, I, as in all my judicial reviews, I've had three of them. Uh, the court has not contested my right to use online material. Uh, but if it's a new act, you have to bring it to the notice of the court. But none of this is new. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about the Planning and Development Act 2000 in the Republic of Ireland. And that, when you're getting that, you need to go into either the consolidated version or the revised version. The version I have here is the revised version. That means that all the subsequent amendments are written in in the appropriate place. And it works. I use it. The lawyers use it, the courts use it. It works. Somebody done a reasonably good job. I always find that women are better at that type of things, fitting in pieces of, of, of sentences into others and getting that right than men. I find that uh, I found that in various other disciplines and things in life. But be that as it may, I don't know who did it. Fair play to whoever did it. And I, I, unless you can find a real problem in it uh, that got it wrong, then you may just accept it as it is. I have no problem with it. So you, you Google or search on the or search engine, whatever it is, uh, and you search for uh, Planning and Development Act, Revised Acts 2000. Okay, okay. Now, one of the, uh, one of the, the things of it here, you'll get up the sections like this. I know you can't see this, please understand. And you'll get up the sections like this. And then you see Section 50B, and you click into that. And you can see that that has been, that has been inserted since. And we'll deal with that in a minute. Now, so if you go down here to the bottom, you'll get what that was inserted by. So I see there F, I'll just go back up to it again, F471, and you go down here to it down at the bottom, F471, inserted. 
28th of September 2010 by Planning and Development Amendment Act 2010, 30, 30 2010, Statutory Instrument 33 SI 451 of 2010. Okay, this is brought in as a result of the law we were promised when we voted yes to Europe and when we voted yes to the Lisbon Treaty. This was written into it. This was published in the uh, supplement to the newspapers, the Sunday Times and all them. And uh, it was there and I read it. And this is what we're promised. And this is its implementation. We don't owe government anything for this. This is the deal that was struck. Now, so now that's what that's inserted by. And now we're going to read. Now we're going to read the section, folks. And it says, this, section 50B, this section applies to proceedings of the following kinds. Proceedings in the High Court by way of judicial review are seeking leave to apply for judicial review of any decision or purported decision made or purport, purportedly made, any action taken or purportedly taken, any failure to take action pursuant to, to, to statutory provision that gives effect to the provision of the Council Directive, the EIA Directive, and that is as amended by the Directive 21192EC and 21452EC. That's the present day version of those. They're sort of updated. Uh, copies. Now, Directive 20142 EC, the European Parliament and Council of 2020 and 2001 on the assessment of the effects of plans and programmes on the environment. The SEA Directive, there it's written there in black and white. The provisions of Directive 2081 EC of the European Parliament concerning integration of pollution control measures. Pollution control. Uh, Paragraph 3, 4 and 6 of the Habitats Directive. An appeal, including appeal by way of case stated to the Supreme Court from a decision of the High Court in proceedings referred to in paragraph A. Now, I presume that the, the Court of Appeal would now be included and in that it would have to be. I don't think I'd say that it would have to be because it's a it's Supreme Court is the Court of Final Appeal. So I think that applies to the Court of Appeal. So an appeal, including an appeal by way of case aid to the Supreme Court, a decision of the High Court. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if that's not amended. If it's not, it, 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 it wouldn't be beaten on that. They'd have to upgrade that. They brought in a new in, in, intermediate court. Um, uh, and so they would have to amend the law. And if it didn't do it, they're still caught by the directive, right? Now, uh, proceedings in the High Court or the Supreme Court, right? For an interim interlocutory relief in relation to proceedings referred to an AMB. Now, note that... Uh, that this is only a high court an interlocutory relief so supposing somebody wants to go in to take an injunction against a development which has started or something that's going on something that's going on the 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 provision for that is contained in section one 160 of the planning and development act of this same act and there are two ways of going in there. One is the, is the, is the local um, circuit court, where the value is, all, is under, of the, of, the, of the property is under, or the project is under 3 million. Now, we'll park that just for the minute because I'd have to look more at that. 3 million euros. Now, in the case of a wind farm or anything like that, it would be a way over that. And in any event, as all of this is dealt with in the High Court, I'd say the High Court would have to accept jurisdiction for this. But it just is worth noting that it's an appeal, uh, including appeal by way of case stated to the Supreme Court for a decision of the High Court in a proceedings referred to at A. So if it was a single wind farm on land and all the whole thing was under 3 million, you would probably might have a problem getting into the High Court and it would appear that you wouldn't be covered there under this. Now, I'm subject to checking on this, but it's not relevant in most cases. I merely bring it to your attention. Proceedings in the High Court or the, proceed, or the Supreme Court for interlocutory relief in relation to proceedings referred to at A and B. And A and B, A and B is, includes, includes, um, includes the SEA directive. 
notwithstanding anything contained in order 89 of the rules of the superior courts and subject to the provision of 2a 3 3 and 4 in proceedings to which this section applies each party including any notice party a notice party is an extra party shall bear its own costs that is very very important folks each party including the notice party shall bear its own costs that means you can't be caught for the cost of the other side the cost of proceedings or a proportion of such costs as are appropriate may be awarded to the applicant to the extent that the applicant succeeds in obtaining the relief and those those costs shall be borne by the respondent so if or notice party or both of them so if it's the state you're going against or board planola or, or the minister or whatever and you win he has to pay your costs in proportion to the amount to which you win but if you lose you are still covered with your protective costs you only pay your own costs it does not affect the courts and courts and ter- entitlement to award costs in favor of a party in matters of exceptional public importance so i mean if you look at the present foreshore and offshore wind thing that is exceptional public importance but you would have to plead that you would plead you'd have to plead that now so the court may award par- costs against a party to which this section applies if it considers it appropriate to do so now just i want to just stop a second here now now i read uh, i read this section here section uh, subsection three and i'm shouting again folks please please bear in mind please bear with me i have to be heard no point in me talking to myself the court may award costs against a party in proceedings to which this section applies if the court considers it appropriate to do so because the court considers the claim or counterclaim by the party was frivolous or vexatious so you can't go in just to punish somebody you have to go in on the directive this is the directive there is the environment this is the law is being breached i don't think anyone i know will be caught with that unless you went in and did like the crucible in the the snooker tournament and paint the courthouse yellow i don't think that's going to happen because the manner in which the party has conducted the proceedings so for example if the judge asked you to produce an affidavit or a document and you declined without due excuse it could damage your costs a bit so you have to comply with the various things that's reasonable for the judge to reach his decision where the party is in contempt of court that's where you go in and you say oh judge i'm going to pitch for i'm you're you're this that you're just you can't do that if you're in contempt of court you can't be at that thing forget about that subsection two does not affect the court's entitlement to award costs in favor of a party in matters of exceptional public importance but you'd have to plead that in this section reference to a court shall be construed in relation to proceedings to which this section applies as reference to the high court or the supreme court as may be appropriate now i'll have to check further is the court of appeal covered i'd say i'd say it has to be now in this i mean you couldn't have a situation where the high court is covered and the supreme court and the court of appeal is not but we'll have to look into that a bit further but anyway you have the idea in this section appropriate provisions mean the provisions of an enactment or instrument under any enactment and then it gives the amendments here and there you have it now folks that's enough on 13 minutes that's a protective cost order if you're doing a judicial review you put that in your statement of grounds you actually put it in the matter of section 50b of the planning and development act 2000 as amended and you put it on the top you state it if you're going in on an injunction uh, you would put it on your notice of, no you'd have a notice of motion and then you'd have your your grounds for your injunction and again you state section 50b now i did it once and i put the section 50b as part of my affidavit and uh, pleading it and part of my statement of grounds it worked all right but i would rather see the top document the main statement of grounds or whatever with that heading in the matter of section 50b of the planning and development act 2000 and and uh and 20 as amended and uh, then you 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 do out your statement of grounds or whatever and you would cite it again to say that the reason this complies is that it's an it complies with the sections in the planning and development act and therefore protection the cost order is sought i think you're well covered there the next thing is if you're doing an affidavit so it'll be i john smith or whatever it is i have this problem this and that and all of that and as well as that because this is an environmental matter i uh, request the honorable court to issue a, 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 an order under section 50b of the planning and development act in the in the basic affidavit so you only mention it you mention it once 
in the basic document like the statement of grounds at the top you would probably put a section in the statement of grounds yes short and sweet uh, to support it in in the statement of grounds or the document for your injunction the injunctive relief and then then uh, uh, you would put it in in your once in your basic uh, affidavit supporting your statement of grounds etc have you that now so so then that means that you only pay your own costs in some cases this is so bad that lawyers are coming forward and working for nothing they're taking this on a no for no fee basis if they lose they don't get paid if they win they get paid in full of the other side so it's a 50 50 risk so that's quite good however some good barristers i know cannot afford to do uh, work for nothing they have to feed their families they have to feed their families and they need money up front so this all depends you need to negotiate this with your legal team and i am not for one minute suggesting lawyers should train for years and work for nothing the only thing this was not taught up to recently i never could find this being taught in any university the reason i know it is i've devoted many years to studying it in conjunction with my good friend pat swords and many others and read up on it quite a lot and because of that i have a good knowledge and i'm willing to share that uh, for nothing for the good of my environment with people and they might as well pick my brain because some lawyers are big-headed and they don't want to talk to an old farmer down the country but the thing about it is they may be afraid that i'd come along and slobber it out in the pub and i don't do that or make a video or anything else i only divulge stuff given to me with the consent of the party you notice in years of making videos i had never quoted anybody without their consent so i know exactly how to behave in those ways so i think i've that fairly good there i think i've clarified section 50b we got this because we were promised it in the treaties we got this because of the public participation directive because of our signatory to the Aarhus convention because the eia directive has a section in it for public participation including judicial review and because the SEA directive has a piece in it for public participation including the uh, judicial review and the planning uh, I'll be next doing a video on section 160 of the planning and development act I'll be doing one on that and uh, section 160 of the planning and development act allows any person to go into the circuit or the high court and to act ask for an injunction and that's, I mean, at the moment, you have a case pending in the European Union, case, seven, case C727 to 22. So how can they go along and predict, predict the outcome of that? The Irish government is saying it can do all this onshore wind, can do all this, build the pilots, it can do all the offshore wind, onshore wind, rip up the whole lot. And that it's budgetary. It's budgetary. So a private firm comes in and rips the coast up to see where they can put the cables to bring the cables ashore with no permission at all or with with, with, with no permission right it comes and does this and there is no overall input by the government at all there's no overall input by the government at all you see what i'm saying what they're doing getting some big crowd vulture fund oh we're going to make money of claiming of the irish people's bills and they are breaking the rules so i think i've said enough about that that is section 50b of the planning and development act it applies to judicial reviews on these directives i talk about and to injunctive relief to get an injunction under section 6160 160 of the planning and development act as amended folks not everyone will watch it to the end thumbs up or thumbs down whatever you think some people hate me fighting these i don't care i'm fighting them anyway bye and we'll see you back for something else soon goodbye